morning, please be seated. If you are here in person for the first time, returning after some time away, or joining us by the streaming service, we give you a very warm welcome. There will be a church meeting on Sunday the 15th of October, that's in two weeks' time, after the morning service. We hope as many of you will stay. The prayer group meets in the terrace room today. Please drop in and join us or leave your prayer requests in the box at the back of the church. Church family news. Sheila Greenslade is continuing to recover in St Helier's Hospital after her operation. Also, Josie Apoko has also been admitted to St Helier's Hospital. Both would welcome visits. Now, don't rush away at the end of the service, but please stay and continue to fellowship with each other at the end over a cup of tea and coffee. There are a number of notices on your service sheet this morning, um, so please have a look at those. Finally, our worship today is led by our minister, the Reverend Hendry Punaya. Thank you. Good morning. It is truly a joy to come together to worship the living God together this beautiful morning. <clears throat> Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord, most high, the great King over all the earth. Let us start this morning worship service by singing our first hymn, 247, I dance in the morning when the world began.
Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we want to give you thanks for your goodness, greatness, and kindness. We want to give you thanks for giving us this privilege to come together from different nations as one family. We want to give you thanks for your great love for us. It is your love that has brought us together to worship, to exalt, and to lift up your holy name. As we look into your holiness, and as we look into your righteousness, we realize that there are certain areas of our lives that we have not been right. There are certain areas we have not been very right, righteous. There are areas of, in our life where we have not been very holy. Lord, at this time we want to confess our sins and our iniquities. Please forgive and cleanse us. Lord, we want to give you thanks for the believers throughout the world are able to come together to worship you wherever they are. Lord, we pray that you will meet your children in your own special way. And as we come together, we want to commit our loved ones, wherever they may be at this time. Lord, we pray that you will continue to shield them with your wings of protection and bless them too, O oh God. We want to pray for this world. We hear of war, famine, floods, and all sorts of disaster. Lord, we just come before your throne and commit this world into your hands. This is your creation, Lord. We pray that you will take charge and guide and lead the leaders of this nation this world and this nation, when they make decisions, Lord, let it be good and your decision. Lord, at this time, we want to commit this church into your hands. We want to commit the leaders of this church into your hands. Lord, we also want to pray for those who come into the sanctuary for whatever reason as they come into the sanctuary, Lord, we pray that they will be able to experience your love, peace, and joy. Lord, we pray that each and every one of us here will be an instrument in your hands in enabling the world to see you. Help us to be like the moon. We don't have our own light. What we receive from you, we reflect. Lord, at this time, we want to commit our families and our loved ones. Be with us, O oh God. Help us to show your love with those whom we come in contact with, our family, our neighbors, at school, at workplace, wherever we are, enable us to shine for you. Lord, we also want to pray for those who are on their own. Lord, we pray that you will be close to them. You will comfort, strengthen, and encourage them. There are times we feel hopeless. We are not sure. We are struggling. We feel we are overwhelmed. We are not we are struggling, oh God. Lord, we pray that you will send the Holy Spirit to console, comfort, and strengthen them, Master. Lord, at this time, we also want to pray for those who are ill, those who are in hospital, those who are at home. Lord, we pray that you will be with them. You are truly our healer, God. We pray that you will touch, heal, and strengthen them. Lord, at this time, we want to commit this worship service into your hands. 
We just pray that you will take charge and guide and lead us and minister to your people in your own special way. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As the Saviour taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, a special anthem by the choir, Ever Verum by Elgar. At this time, as the young people go for their session, let's bless them by saying, God. Let us continue to worship the Lord by singing our next hymn, 518. Father, hear the prayer we offer.
at this time let us move on to the scripture reading. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses from 1 to 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbeth by, in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he was brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know his voice of strangers. Jesus used his, this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come, came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll bring the offer tree forward. the offer tree and how about the bread and wine? I'll take it down. Thank you. Loving God, we just want to praise you for your goodness. We want to praise you for blessing us with everything that is good. It is such an honor and privilege to receive from you. We are truly humbled. We want to give you thanks for giving us this privilege to offer a small portion of that blessing for the establishment of your kingdom. We give gifts and givers for your ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us continue to worship the Lord by singing our next hymn, 504. May the mind of Christ, my Savior. Five.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord, we are coming before your throne of grace. We pray that you will send us the heavenly manna, enable us to receive, enable us to understand, and enable us to walk according to your word. And Lord, enable me to bring your word with clarity. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10, it talks about Jesus being the gate. What is a gate for? It's the owner of the property who decides who comes in or who goes out. The owner gives permission. It's like holding the keys. As long as you have the keys of your house, it's yours. It can be a rented house, it's still yours. Um, one of the things I, I realized just before moving from Telford is I had to hand over all the church keys back to all the church stewards. And each time you give a key, you feel that you are no more in charge. You are giving it away. Then my office key, where when I had to hand it, I said, mm, I'm no more in charge. Then the final keys was the man's keys. I said, whoa, I won't be able to enter this house without somebody else's permission. So the gate is likewise. When Christ says, I am the gate, that means he, he is the authority. He is everything. Verse 1, if anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and robber. That means, when there is this sheep pen, there will be people who will be trying to climb over and get in to infiltrate and do some damage and destruction. So we need to be careful to keep our eyes and ears open. Anything happens, we need to check you can be the best teacher when you teach. You can teach with fantastic conviction. You can be very eloquent. But the question is what you are sharing? Is it in line with the scripture? The scripture is our final authority. We need to check that it is in line with the scripture. And these days, because people have jumped over, the shepherd and the sheep needs to be alert because all sorts of strange teachings are creeping in. And if we are not careful, we will fall. The shepherd and the sheep needs to be alert. We need to keep our eyes and ears open and our Bible open as well. Verse 2, it's the shepherd who enters the gate and the sheep follows him and the watchman opens the gate for him. The watchman recognizes the shepherd because he's the boss. So what happens is, he opens the gate for the shepherd and when the shepherd enters in, the sheep follows the shepherd. 
the ship has the privilege to enter because of the shepherd. The next three verses talks about the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. The sheep recognizes the voice of the shepherd. Many years ago, I had a, the privilege of uh, attending a conference in Australia. And what happened was, when we were there, um, I had the privilege of attending, of visiting the largest cattle farm in the world that was uh, known as William Creek and Anna Creek. One whole day we drove, we started in the morning, the whole day we were driving, we couldn't get across. We had to stay a night there and next morning, we had to put a tent and pitch a tent and sleep there. The next morning, another two and a half, three hours we had to drive to get out of that one cattle farm. So you know how huge, how enormous that cattle farm was. So when visiting this uh, cattle farm, there's, uh, they had an uh, auction mart. So what they did was they were auctioning sheep there. And the auctioneer, he called sheep grade one up to the podium. And the sheep walked straight to the podium and stopped. Then he said, sheep grade two up. And the sheep came. Then he said, sheep grade three. And there were about seven sheep. They all stood in their place. And I was shocked. I said, wow, these are intelligent animals. They know exactly where to walk and where to stand. And I told the person who took me there was known as Petrol Padre, Reverend Kevin Wolford. So I told him, wow, these sheep are really intelligent. They know where to stop. He looked at me. Don't talk like a silly goat. <laughs> he said, these are dumb animals. I said, oh. He said, observe carefully. He said, all these, those animals which are on the podium, below the podium, for every sheep, there is a guy pushing desperately green grass up. As soon as the green grass goes, the sheep will run. So that guy, so there are seven guys under the podium just pushing green grass up so that the sheep will continue to eat. I said, oh, right. <laughs> then he said, he explained to me saying, the sheep and shepherd. And he said, when it comes to the sheep, it will eat anything. If there is no green grass, it will eat the sand and die. If there is no crystal clear water, it will drink the dirty water and die. And then he went on to say, that's the reason the role of the shepherd is very, very, very important. The shepherd will need to do his homework before taking the sheep out. He will need to know where the green grass is and where the still water, clear water is. If he does not do his homework, what will happen is the sheep will die, the sheep will perish. I said, oh. And then he said, one thing the sheep, the sheep recognizes is the voice of the shepherd. The sheep is very attentive. It listens to the voice of the shepherd. It will take the shepherd's voice and it will know what call is it. Is it a call to feed them? Is it a call to say there is danger? Or is it a call to just come to me? The sheep recognizes the voice of the shepherd. Likewise, in our relationship with each other, the more time we spend with some, someone, 
the better we get to know them. Verse 7, he says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He is not a gate, but he is the gate. Salvation is through Christ. Salvation is through Christ. Christ has come so that we can have life and have it to the full. We can have life and from life, we move on to eternal life. They say, in terms of Christian death, it is not dying, but it is sowing. It is not dying, but sowing. Because at the right time, when Christ comes, we will come up alive. Without him, no gate, which means there is no entrance. Christ is the gate. We go through the gate. If let's say this is the gate, we go through. And this gate is Christ. Which means if there is no gate, then we cannot enter in. Christ is the gate. And we enter through him. And once when we enter, and once when we enter through that gate, what happens? Once when we enter through that gate, what happens? If we enter through the gate, we become his children. We become citizens of his kingdom. If my father is a king, who am I? Prince! And who are you? Princess! Wow! Through Christ, we become prince and princess. We become a royal priesthood. We sit in heavenly places. We are more than conquerors. We become his ambassadors. We become his ambassadors. What do ambassadors represent? If I am an ambassador from Singapore coming to you, then what do I represent? Singapore. If we are Christ's ambassadors, who do we represent? Christ. We represent Christ. Do you know meaning of represent? Represent means to represent him. Represent is to represent him. So we represent Christ in and through our lives. The shepherd and the sheep. When we have the right relationship, then we will represent Christ in and through our lives. Then we become like the moon. The moon doesn't have its own light. What it receives from the sun, it reflects. Likewise, what we receive from Christ, we will reflect it to this world. Whoever we come in contact with, we will be reflecting the love of Christ. And so this morning our prayer is that we will decrease and he will increase in our lives, which means we will become more Christ-like in word, thought and deeds. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, once again we want to give you thanks for calling us to be your flock. Lord, there are times we are not sure and as we struggle, we want to give you thanks for your goodness in bringing us back to your fold. Lord, we pray that as your children, we will be able to grow in your likeness and in your image. As a shepherd, when you call us, enable us to enter through that gate that is 
through Christ. And we pray that you will continue to be with us and guide us and lead us. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Let us continue to worship the Lord by singing our next hymn. 481, The Lord's My Shepherd. Let us turn to page 189, our worship book, 189. The peace. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us, to, let us turn to page 191. Lord and giver of every good thing, we bring to you bread and wine for our communion, lives and gifts for your kingdom, all for transformation through your grace and love, made known in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you, gracious Father, our Maker and Sustainer. You created the heavens and the earth and formed us in your own image. Though we sinned against you, your love for us was constant, and you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Savior of the world. Sharing our human nature, he was born of Mary 
and baptized in the Jordan. He proclaimed your kingdom by word and deed and was put to death upon the cross. You raised him from the dead. You exalted him in glory and through him you have sent your Holy Spirit, calling us to be your people, a community of faith. And so with angels and archangels and all the choirs of heaven, we join in the triumphant hymn. Holy God, we praise you that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Saviour Christ took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection and proclaiming his eternal sacrifice, we offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving as we declare the mystery of faith. Send down your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him forever and bring us with the whole creation to your eternal kingdom. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Twenty-four A, Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Bearer of our sins, Jesus, Redeemer of the world. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger, and those who believe in me shall never thirst. Draw near with faith. We will all receive the bread together and as we partake, as you receive it, please feel free to partake of it. Then when it comes to the wine, keep it, 
until I tell you when to have it.
you. Thank you. The blood of Christ shed for you at Calvary. Take it and drink it in remembrance of Him. blood of Christ shed for you at Calvary. Take it and drink it in remembrance of him. Amen. Jesus Christ is our good shepherd and this is the blood of Christ shed for us. Take it and drink it in remembrance of him. Amen. Page 197. Prayer number 30. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament and united us. Let us respond by singing our final hymn, 251, Jesus is waiting, 251.
Let us receive the blessing. May the love, peace and joy of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit abide with us both now and evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you.